Hey, good day to you. This is Stan Prochowski with Prochowski Estate Law, and this is the Ask Stan Show every Thursday at 12 noon, where I answer all your estate planning questions submitted throughout the week. If you have a question about wills, trusts, Medicaid pre-planning, Medicaid crisis planning, the nursing home, or just estate planning in general, just send them to me here on Facebook or call me at 363-7222 or email me at prochowskiestatelaw at gmail.com. I'll answer them live on WKSR Radio, and we post them here on the Ask Stan Show every Thursday. So, let's get right to it. Estate Law. Stan the Man Prochowski with us here every Thursday morning. we got Alex over there in the corner uh, uh, filming us for some reason this morning. But, uh, anyway, hey, how are you? I'm good. How about you? Doing great, man. Always good to see you. Yeah, it's always good to be here. A pleasure. I appreciate it. So, uh, hey, listen, I want to go over real quick what uh, is coming up, and then I want to go into a very interesting topic this morning. But first coming up is uh, I've got a webinar tonight, uh, uh, Thursday uh, at 6 o'clock tonight. It's uh, called my uh, Wills Trust in the Nursing Home. That's at 6 o'clock, and if you're interested in that, just you know, call the office or we'll send you a link, and you can just sort of click on it. It's a webinar. It's a virtual event. And we're doing our first live seminar. You know, we do all those live educational seminars, and for the pandemic, we sort of had to go virtual, but we're going back to live, and I'm doing that on August the 27th, which is uh, two weeks right from today. So we're going to do that uh, here in town. Uh, if you're interested in that and get a pretty good response, people are just ready to get out. And also, I'm going to stream it live. I'm going to do it virtually as well, sort of a live um, uh, recording of it. So you can actually attend it virtually if you're uncomfortable getting out. But if you want to get out, you know, having we're going to social distance, practice all those. Uh, recommended uh, safety procedures, no problem there. But um, doing that again, uh, I put some mailers out and said, you, you got one in your mailbox, you said, and brought it in with you. So that's uh, next Thursday, I mean, two Thursdays from today, two weeks. I'm going to do it at noon and again at 6 o'clock. So uh, let me know and we'll uh, call me an RSVP for that or call and get a link to go virtually. Hey, what I want to talk about today is, uh, you know, I always like to talk about questions on. You know the Ask Stan show as well as here at the bonus hour, and you get people call me about wills a lot. Uh, you know, estate plans uh, during, especially during the pandemic that's going on. People feel like they need to get something in place right away. And, um, you know, maybe they're going on vacation, which might be a little curtailed at this point in time, or just worried about what might happen to them health-wise. And uh, so, you know, I've often been asked the question. Uh, you know, what is a will? And I talk about that in my seminars, you know, the pros and cons of wills. They're, you know, wills are a good instrument, but it's really not, it's just a small step in the right direction. But uh, a will is really just a small part of estate planning. It's just an instrument that transfers property. And people have asked, you know, over time, you know, where does a will come from? And that's what I want to talk about today, because about a year ago or something, I, I was pretty intrigued with this, this topic. It's like, you know, last will and testament, not just something a bunch of lawyers got together and decided to make and we have it in law. It actually comes from our uh, uh, ancient history. And uh, just like any other topic that you want to research, if you want to research, you know, last will and testament, you're going to find you get, get, that you get your feet wet crossing the Jordan River. Because actually the first references of inheritance, um, is, it comes from scriptures. And so if you look at your scriptures, you know that the Bible is riddled with estate planning. You know, there's over 300 references to the word inheritance in uh, scriptures, both in the Old and New Testament. Now, when I say the, the word inheritance, I'm talking about the original Hebrew and um, <coughs> Greek and Chaldean text that it's written in, but uh, it, it's this concept of, of inheritance. There's no real concept of a, of a written last will that I found in scriptures, but the, because it wasn't necessary, because you know, the, the scriptures allotted for how property was to pass. And the very first mention of it is right in Genesis chapter 15 when <clears throat> Abraham is a little bit worried because he doesn't have an heir for his stuff to go to. You know, so he, he, there's some reference to that. Um, I'm going to be real quick on this because we got a lot of history to cover. We're going to talk about the history of wills. So, um, the uh, uh, there's another concept that uh, comes up with wills, and that is, you know, people always say, "Do I need to leave my stuff equally to my children, or can I be unequal?" There's no there's no right or wrong, but if you look at scriptures, you know, back in Numbers, uh, reference, you know, God gave the promised land to the 12 tribes, and he said, divide them according to the numbers. And tribes that had more numbers got more, but it was basically an equal division. And there's also references of uh, unequal division by God, because 
uh, in the same uh, book, he talks about giving two portions of it to Joseph. You know, so um, you know, there's it supports that. There's also uh, he refers to a delayed inheritance. When he's given the promised land, he says, you know, I'm not going to give it to you all at once because your numbers are not great enough yet, and they'll, they'll be waste and lost. So I'll, I'll, I won't drive everybody out just yet, but as I drive more and more out, I'll let you have more and more of the inheritance. So he even talks about delayed inheritance. But I did a whole PowerPoint presentation on what I call the biblical perspectives of um, estate planning. Anybody's interested, you know, I'll be glad to come to your church and do this just as a service because I, I, I like doing it. It's fun. I'm a, I'm a, I love studying scriptures, and it's just a fascinating uh, thing. I do it from time to time. But if anybody's interested in that, just let me know, and I'll, I'm glad to do that because it, it, uh, it is just very interesting. So let's fast forward a little bit in time. Um, if, uh, we get to the ancient Rome. And, of course, this is more like the, the New Testament times, the times of Christ. In ancient Rome, they actually had um, the concept of a written will. Now, back then, a will, the word will just meant real property or land. Okay? Uh, it's a little bit later on when they actually came up with testament, which refers to personal property, which is your stuff. I, often, I use the phrase your stuff. So that's when they say last will and testament, that's what they're talking about, the real property and then personal property. Because um, uh, uh, Caesar actually had a, uh, a will that, where he gave all power and property to Octavius and went on to you know, uh, rule Rome and create and build the empire. <clears throat> so moving along in history, then... In, uh, during the Norman Conquest, which happened, of course, in 1066, uh, England was, they were, they were sort of reorganized by the Norman Conquest, and that's when they created that, the system known as the feudal system, all right? That was a concept where all land was owned by the lord, the landlord, which derives a lot of those terms, and you didn't own land, but you could only own an interest in land. It was the feudal system. And if you, uh, whenever you, uh, uh, a user of the land, a servant of the land passed away, the land would uh, go back to, or a sheet back to the Lord, because uh, it pretty much divested any property rights that people had in land themselves, but, uh, it, you know, the feudalism destroyed the power that, uh, but that anyone but the king could will away or give complete title of land away. So, then, uh, about 500 years after that, <coughs> In 1540, we came up with what's known as the Statute of Wills, and that started to codify things. And uh, that's uh, that's where our common law um, heritage comes from. Kind of, you know, I can spend a lot of time on it over the years, but that's what sort of blossomed into what we have now with the Statute of Wills and uh, uh, the Last Will and Testament. And uh, over the years, it has changed on what makes it valid. Uh, the probate court was then established to protect the rights of the deceased because the deceased, of course, wasn't here to voice his intent anymore. And abuse started entering into the system, of course, when you, somebody leaves property and the deceased is not here to, uh, his intent is only what's left written. And so the probate court was established for that. So the history of wills is a long history. I would argue a long history of abuse, which is why they're so cumbersome to deal with these days. But uh, uh, nonetheless, uh, the history of wills is just uh, pretty fascinating. And like I said, if you, you know, most topics, in, especially in law, you research a topic in law, and I always say you're going to get your feet wet crossing the Jordan River because that's where most of this stuff came from. But um, I want to go over a couple of uh, notable uh, wills I came across in my research. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about some of the oddest requests in wills. Remember that? Actually, we talked about the guy that invented Pringles, had his ashes buried in the Pringles. Yeah, community. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. I want to go over some of them. Well, I consider them the oddest wills that have ever been recorded, and one of them is the longest. You, know, you might want to take a stab at that and see <clears throat> what you think the longest will ever was. Uh, think big if you <laughs> if you're going to take a guess at it. But the, there was an English woman named uh, Frederica Evelyn Stillwell Cook, and her will was published in 1925. And her will was 1,066 pages long. Now she only had an estate of $100,000, of course, in 1925. And, might equivalent might be the equivalent of maybe a million dollars, but that was the longest will. I read that and I thought, boy, how would you like to be on that case being paid by the hour, right? <laughs> but uh, anyway, the uh, the shortest will, of course, once we go with the longest one, we might want to talk about the shortest. The shortest one was uh, that was recorded as a legal will uh, was by somebody named uh, Bimla Rishi of Dela or Delhi, India, and it's three words: all two sons. Okay, that's the shortest will in history that's known. <laughs> and one of the cutest ones I thought came up, uh, 
most unusual. You know, I talked one day about holographic <coughs> wills. Holographic wills are handwritten, kind of on your deathbed sort of thing. But, um, uh, there was one that was accepted into probate court. It was, it was considered valid, and it came out of a tragic accident that happened on June 8th of uh, 1948 in Sasquatch. So Sasquatch, <laughs> Sasquatch, Canada, I mean, in Canada, right? Yeah. But that's how you know, Sasquatch. Maybe. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. They, yeah. they want to name it like Pennsylvania or something. So Sasquatch, Canada. There was a farmer up there. His name was <clears throat> Cecil George Harris, and he got trapped under his own tractor. Okay, it rolled over, I guess, and got trapped. And he was thinking he wasn't going to survive about it. So he, with a rock, he carved into the paint of the fender few words and this is what he carved. He said, in case I die in this mess, <laughs> I leave all to the wife. And he signed it Cecil George Harris. And that fender was probated in the court in Canada. And it was it was it was valid and stood as his will. And the, the fender, get this, the fender itself was currently on display at the law library at the University of Saskatchewan College of Law. So <laughs> that's yeah. one of the cutest wills there is. So um, but we talk about that in my seminar, what wills are, what trusts are, uh, the difference between the two, the pros and cons, and you know, we talk about the nursing home. So, you know, a, a will is just a very small portion of what we call estate planning. There's a lot of ways to uh, give inheritance. It's not, you know, a will is just one instrument that, uh, but that's that happens. So, hey, we have a lot of fun with it. It's pretty interesting when you know the, uh, the origins of this sort of thing and why they do it. But, you know, if you're interested in something like that, you know, if a pandemic or a vacation or something has you thinking about you need to get something done, I agree with the part that you need to get something done. But don't just, just don't hurry up and do any old thing to get it. It doesn't take long, it doesn't take much longer to do a, a, a good comprehensive plan than it does to hurry up and do a will. Uh, don't, I don't recommend scratching one out in the fender of your car or your tractor, but apparently that <laughs> would work in a pinch, right? <laughs> that was unique anyway. So anyway, again, let me go over what's going on. Uh, I've got a, a webinar tonight uh, at 6 o'clock. Uh, call my office. We'll, Alex will send you a link, and you can just click on that and tune in. And uh, But I'm doing a live a free educational seminar called uh, Will's Trust in the Nursing Home two weeks from tonight. We're going to do it twice that day. We're going to do it once at noon, and then again at 6 o'clock. That's going to be live. Call an RSVP. We're going to do two doors down from my office. We're going to have social distancing in place. You can wear a mask if you want. And if you're uncomfortable coming out but still want to come, I'm going to stream it live. So Alex will be there, and she'll help me get the PowerPoint up on the screen and, uh, for people that want to watch it live. And so, I, I, But don't want to actually come. And, and, but we'll have, we'll have everybody spaced far apart. And, uh, we'll practice all these safe, uh, safe uh, practices for pandemic. So, hey, listen, before we run out of time, uh, my number down there is 363-7222 on the southeast side of the square. Call me if you have any estate planning questions. We'll talk about it. And I want to end up with the oldie of the week. Stan Prochowski, oldie of the week. Oh, I, yeah. I got a good one. I don't yeah. have anything to pull. Like, no, that's okay. You don't okay. have to play it now. I we can do it next Play time. it between now and next, and next right. Thursday. Right. I, got, I got a good one. All right. There was two versions of this. And uh -huh. It's uh, it's called Get Ready from a group called Rare Earth. You know yep. that one? Yep. Now look, they did two versions. One was like 25 minutes long, and in that, you, you don't have to play that one, but in that one, they did one of the best drum solos I, I think I've ever yep. heard. Uh, everybody did a solo in the middle of that, all the all the, all the members. The album it. version. But uh, yeah, they did the album version, that's right. About 20 some minutes long, but uh, uh, it's great. But uh, just the regular version, uh, you know, Get Ready by Rare Earth. That was a classic. Yes, so it was. Chance find that and play it. Yes, I, can't, it I can't remember the year. I think it was early 70s. Around 70. Uh, the early yeah, 70s. Something yeah. Like, yeah, something like that. <laughs> Stan Prochowski, uh, good, good information this morning. Oh. Thank you so much for uh, being with us as you are every Thursday. You gave your number and everything. Yeah, 363 7222. No problem. I'm glad to be here. And I look forward to seeing you and other folks uh, either tonight or to, you know next Thursday. Mike, sounds good. Okay, sounds good, Butch. Thank okay. you. Have a good day. All right.